In this lesson, we'll be looking at exponential growth versus decay and how to identify which is which. Not only that, but how to figure out the change factor based on a percentage or the percentage based on a change factor. In my last video, we talked about the parent function for an exponential equation was y equals a b to the x, where b was the change factor. And a was the initial value or y-intercept. When we talk about a change factor, there's certain characteristics about the change factor that can tell us whether it is exponential growth or decay. And I touched on it a little bit in my last video. B is going to be the one that's telling you whether the function is increasing or decreasing. And if B is in between 0 and 1, then that means the function is decreasing and indicates decay. Then if B is greater than 1, that means that the function is increasing, which indicates growth. And if B, the change factor, equals 1, then it's not exponential because 1 to the x would just be 1, 1 of the first, 1 squared, 1 of the third, and so on. So it's not exponential. And we know that 1 is kind of this baseline. So if it's below 1, it's decay. And if it's above 1, it's growth. And we use that to help us find this change factor when given a percentage, for example. So if it's a decay, then we're subtracting it from one because it's below one. And if it's growth, we're adding it to one because it's above one. So in my previous video, I touched on it a little bit here where two indicated growth and one half, which is less than one indicated decay. So that's just an example of that. I have a few examples down here. A growth rate of 6% indicates that our change factor will be bigger than one. So one plus this growth rate of 6% would be one plus 0 0.06. And that will be 1.06 for our change factor. Then if the common factor is two, then that indicates it's a number above one. So we need to figure out how far is two from one. That's one, but in percentage form, that's 100% growth. In the next example, we have a decay rate of 40%. Decay means less than one. So we're gonna be subtracting 40% which is 0.4, and that's going to equal 0.6 for our change factor. Try the next two and see if you can figure them out. Hopefully, you can see in the first one, the change factor is above 1, and anything above 1 is the percentage of growth. In this case, above 1 is 0.25 which is 25% growth. The next example is below one. So how far below one is it? It's 0.35, which is 35% decay. And that's how you go back and forth between percentage and change factor. I have a table of values for the next example, and we're going to be writing an equation based on the table of values. Now, the sentence at the top of the example actually tells you the information that you need to write your equation, but I included the table of values to hopefully, hopefully show you how it relates. If I were just going to look at the table of values and look at the change factor for the y coordinates, I am multiplying by 1.2 every time. And then if I look at the information given, it says the initial value 
is 10 and the growth rate is 20%. So since it's growing, that means it's going to be above one. And that's going to be 1.2 for our B value. And then if we use our parent function, then we know it's going to be 10 times 1.2 to the X. Now, if you look back at the table of values, you can see where that comes from, hopefully. 10 is the initial value, the Y intercept, and 1.2 is the change factor. And that's all. Isn't that so easy? Go ahead and try the next example if you can. Pause it, try it, and come back. From the table of values, you can see that we're multiplying by 0.8 each time. So that's the change factor. With an initial value, a y-intercept of 100. And then from the information given, it says that the initial value is 100 and the decay rate is 20%. Since it's decay, that's below one, which is 0 0.80, 80%. Not 80%, I'm sorry, 20% decay is a 0.8 change factor. And that's confirmed from our table of values. We have our parent function and then we plug in our information, y-intercept, change factor, raised to the x. y-intercept, change factor, exponential function. Not too bad. Let's look at the next example. It's a word problem. I like these. A person wants to invest $500 in a bank account that earns 15% each year. There's some key information here. We're investing 500 and earning 15%. What would be the common factor, initial value, and growth or decay rate, depending? We know that the initial value is 500 because that's the amount that was initially invested. We also know that the growth rate is 15%, which means that we're going to be adding 15% to 1. So our equation is initial value times change factor to the X. So what this means is X represents each year. So every year, the amount invested is growing by 15%. And this one kind of comes from that, that first input first investment of 500. So you still have the 500, that first one, and then you're multiplying 15% every year. So that's kind of why we have to have that one in there. It indicates that first iteration kind of. And then Y is going to be your total amount after X years. So in the next example, when it says find the balance after 10 years, that means that X is 10. You could do this with a table of values by reiterating 15%, or you can use the equation that you just wrote and type it in your calculator. So we go 500 times 1.15 raised to the 10th. And we get about, $2,022.78. So if you invest $500 into a bank account and it is accruing interest, you left it there for 10 years, then after 10 years, you would have about $2,000. That's not too shabby. Next example, a commercial property initially worth $200,000 decreases in value by 8.4% a year. That's not good. So decreases, and this was initial worth. So answer the next couple questions and see if you can get it. Hopefully you got the initial value was 200,000. The decay rate was 8.4%. 
which made the change factor point nine one six. So my equation is y equals the initial value times the change factor to the x. Then after 10 years, that means we're plugging in 10 for the years and then just plugging it into your calculator. This 916, 0.916 is below one. It's less than one, so it indicates decay. So if you're just looking at the equation and you're trying to decide if it's growth or decay, since it's below one, it's decay. It's losing value every year. And then if it's above one, it's growth. So let's type this in the calculator and let's figure out. We've got 200 thousand times 0.916 for 10 years and after 10 years it would be 83,173 and 45 cents that's not good that's sad that's all I have for this lesson I hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions please let me know and I'd be happy to help see you in the next one